If you haven't used PDF stamps before, then you're going to learn all about how stamps are used within the Acrobat and PDF environment. But if you have used stamps, then this video is going to blow your mind. To start off, a stamp is a general purpose and customizable way to stamp special information onto a document in exactly the same way you'd use a rubber ink stamp on paper. But as we'll see, PDF stamps are much more than an ink stamp could ever be and they are massively useful across a wide range of document workflows. So hold on to your seats and welcome to Stamps Gone Wild. As we've just seen, PDF stamps are, of course, loosely based on the idea of ink stamps. And ink stamps are everywhere in the paper document world. They're ubiquitous. They're used to place dates on documents, signatures, certifications, to label a document with company info, to mark a document as confidential, or to stamp any other kind of special data onto a document. They are very much an intimate part of document processing. There's another workflow tool that stamps are loosely based on, and that's the sticker. Little sticky pieces of paper or tape placed on a page to indicate, for example, where it should be signed or initialized, or to put a label onto a document. For electronic document workflows, as you can see here, PDF stamps cover both of these areas. And in fact, they do much, much more than could ever be accomplished with an ink stamp or a sticker. Stamps and in particular, customized dynamic stamps are very popular in PDF workflows. And in fact, these are one of the most common work requests we get from customers. We'll see why in just a second. Let's take a look at some examples. This is our standard corporate non-disclosure agreement. Before sending this to a client, I might want to explicitly mark where it needs to be initialized. I'll scroll down to the location, then from the comments menu, I'll select the Markup Tools and then the Stamps. From here I need to select a stamp category. Some of the ones displayed here are custom and some are the built-in stamps that come with Acrobat. I'll select the Sign Here category and the Initial Stamp. After it's placed, I can still move the stamp around and rotate it. Pretty simple, except that it was a bit of a hassle drilling down through the menus. It's a lot easier to access stamps from the stamp tool on the commenting toolbar. Let's take a look at some other built-in stamps. For example, I might want to place the draft stamp if I was negotiating with the client for the terms of the agreement. I might also want to place the not for public release stamp to let the client know that they can't pass this document around. Once the negotiations are complete, and the document's ready to go, I might want to mark it with Approved. This is a pretty useful set of stamps, but they're all pretty plain. They're really just static images. What do you do if you want more information? For example, I'd like the date that this document was approved and the name of the person who marked it as approved. For this kind of dynamic information, we need a dynamic stamp. Here are the built-in dynamic stamps that come with Acrobat. And of course, there's an Approved stamp. When I place it on the document, it looks much the same as the other approved stamp, except that now it contains the name of the engineer and the time and date. It can do this because it contains form fields and scripts that set this information at the time the stamp is placed. This is what dynamic stamps are all about and what makes them extraordinarily powerful tools. All these stamps that we've seen so far are the ones that come built into Acrobat. They are all well and good for many processes, but the real power of stamps comes into play when we create our own custom stamps. Let's look at a simple example. I have an employee named Alice, and she signs NDAs all the time, so she's created a signature stamp. I'll scroll down to the signature area of the document and apply her stamp. Applying the signature in this way saves a lot of time and money because we don't have to print the document out and then rescan it. Now that's a simple stamp. Let's take a look at a custom dynamic stamp. I'll scroll back to where we have the approved stamp and apply my own approved. It has the same information on it as the built-in approved dynamic stamp, but notice the background. It's been branded for pdfscripting.com and it also has a signature on it. A very nice touch and the really cool thing about this signature is that it's also dynamic. This stamp only looks this way when it's applied from Alice's computer. But I have another engineer named Larry. Let's see how the stamp looks when I change the identity information on this machine to match Larry's name. 
Now I'll select exactly the same stamp that we used before. Not only did the name and the date change to match the current parameters, but so did the signature. The stamp updates both the username and the signature. I can create one stamp, hand it out to all of my employees, and the info displayed on the stamp is automatically customized for each person. Let's look at another use for dynamic stamps. This is, after all, a contract, which is a legal document, and it might one day be used in a court case. This stamp is an evidence exhibit stamp. It was created by Rick Bornstein, who blogs about PDF for lawyers. Each time this stamp is placed, the exhibit number increments. If I want to set the value of the exhibit number, I can do it from this toolbar button here. This is a custom toolbar button that I've created just for this purpose. I'll set it to 55. Now when I place the stamp, it shows up as 55 and starts counting from there. I've done something else with the script in this stamp. I've set it up so that I can use it with letters. I'll put in the letter T. Now when the stamp is placed, it shows a letter and it increments the letter. Now we're getting into some really interesting territory. We can not only set information dynamically, but we can also collect information from the user to use on the stamp at runtime. Let's find a clear spot on the document, and I'll show you another way that a stamp can be used. Here's a markup stamp that I use for pointing out changes. When it's placed, it pops up an input dialog where I can enter a small note. It looks just like I marked up the document by hand, doesn't it? This is a standard invoice created from QuickBooks. We get these kinds of invoices all the time. There are several stamps that are used throughout the approval process, but I want to show you the last stamp that's applied, which is when we write out the check. As soon as it's applied, it displays a dialog box for entering information that will be displayed on the stamp. Notice that three of these fields are pre-filled out. The date, the amount, and the invoice. You'll see that the amounts in the dialog match the amounts that are on the form. I'll just enter some miscellaneous information into these fields. This stamp actually collects information from the PDF that's being stamped. Now that's pretty powerful. The code in this stamp actually scans the PDF and collects information off of it. Now that's pretty powerful. Notice also that the stamp contains a logo, all the information that was entered, and a barcode. All of the info that we've entered into the stamp is encoded in this barcode. If the document is printed out and archived, I can instantly receive all of that information with a barcode reader. And since the stamp script can acquire just about any info from the PDF, we could actually use a stamp purely for placing barcodes onto any PDF. But wait, there's more. If I open up the Document Properties dialog, and we go to the custom tab, you'll see that all of that information was also written into the custom metadata for this document. This stamp has both acquired data from the document and modified it. That's pretty good stuff. As we've seen before, one of the things about stamps that's a real hassle is that you have to select them off the menu. This is especially true if you use a lot of different stamps during a single session with the document. To solve this problem, you can create single-click toolbar buttons for activating each one of the stamps you want to use. This is called automating the stamp tool, and there are two ways to go about doing it. The first method is to simply activate the standard stamp tool menu item through automation, basically using the toolbar button as a shortcut to the stamp menu. It's a technique I've used many times for our accounting clients. During tax season, these accounting firms are processing thousands of tax forms. Part of the process is checking that each entry and calculation is valid. To do this, many firms use their own PDF stamps to mark up the tax returns. For example, let's say that this document was part of a tax return. These buttons are all custom JavaScript buttons that I've created for activating stamps. If I wanted to place a red check mark, I just click on the button and then place the stamp. The same with the green check mark and the blue check mark. I've also got a special stamp for missing information in case there's something that needs to be looked up. The other method for automating stamps is for the automation script to place the stamp on a specific location on the form. Here's a mechanical drawing that's in review for an update. I have a stamp that's applied by the reviewing engineers through the various review stages, and it's activated from this button here. As soon as I click on it, it displays an input dialog where, for example, I can select an image. I'll select my company logo, since I'm the one who's doing the review, and I'll enter in information that's specific to my company and the review. 
this dialog contains radio buttons that allow me to select the state of the review, the date, and to put my name in. As soon as I click OK, the stamp is automatically placed in the bottom right hand corner of the document and then I can resize it and maybe move it to a different location. Automating the stamps gives me additional control and ease of use. All of these things that I've shown you should give you a pretty good idea of the different ways that a PDF stamp can be used, from placing simple images on the PDF to collecting complex information and even modifying the PDF in useful ways. And of course, being able to automate the use of the stamp to make it much easier to deal with. Stamps are certainly a very powerful workflow tool with endless possibilities. Thanks for watching, and please visit our website at www.pdfstripting.com where we have loads of articles, scripts, and sample files all about stamps.